Alright, so what we want to look at here is we want to look at uh, systems. Okay, so we want to look at a system. We want to eventually look at the transfer function of a system. And once we get the transfer function of a system, we're going to consider your poles, the poles and zeros of a transfer function. Okay, so let's see if we can get an idea of what a system is, right? So let's consider this LR series circuit, right? So right, it's a standard um, series circuit, right? With circuit elements, um, L and R, and you have a voltage source here, right? So input voltage. Okay, so, well, if you, okay, so you have an input voltage into this circuit and you Okay, so you're measuring, you have your input voltage into your circuit, and then you also, what you're doing is you're measuring the current that uh, results, right? And for different input voltages, right, um, you're going to get different output currents, right? Okay, so if you change, so once again, if you change the input voltage, that's going to have an effect on your output current, right? Okay, so what a system is for us, right, is that you're going to have a single input, right, um, U of T, right, so for example, single input over here is your input voltage, and then once you have your input, you're going to get a certain output, right, and the output that you get is going to depend on your system, right, so, well, this system over here, well, your LR series circuit, right? Um, the output that you get depends on the R and the L, right? So if you have a certain uh, input U of T, right? The output depends on your system, right? And the properties of the system H, right? Right, so our definition of a system is, it's a mapping, right? Um, that for each input, u of t, you're going to get a unique output y of t, right? Okay, and how you represent your system is by this sort of diagram, right? And uh, this over here, if you want, you could think of it as a black box, right? So you put a certain input in and then you get a certain output come in from your system. All right, now your systems that we're going to consider would be systems that are modeled by a differential equation, a single differential equation. Okay, so so we're considering this LR series circuit, and this is going to be our system for us. You have your input into your system, which is the input voltage, and then you have your output, right, which is what we regard as the output is the current passing through, right? Okay, and you can have different outputs. Your output is what you're interested in, right? So for example, you may be interested in the voltage across your inductor. That might be the output that you're interested in, right? But in this particular case, what we're interested in is the current that is passing through your circuit, right? So input is the voltage into your circuit, and then the output is the current, right? Um, through the circuit. Okay, as I said, um, this the system represented by the circuit um, and the systems we're going to con that we're going to consider would be modeled by a single differential equation, right? Okay, and how we get the differential equation in this part for this particular system, right? Um, uh, you just use some circuit laws, right? Um, okay, so if you use Kirchhoff's voltage law, right, your input voltage over here is going to be equal to the voltage drop across your resistor plus the voltage drop across your inductor here, right? right uh, so the voltage drop across the resistor is I times R, which is this IR here, right? And the voltage drop across the inductor is LDI dt, right, which is this over here, right? Okay, so a voltage drop across the resistor plus the voltage drop across the inductor is IR plus LDI dt, right? And that is equal to input voltage U of t, right? 
Okay, so you see that our system over here is modeled by a single differential equation. Right, okay, so let's consider an example of a, an X system, right? So it's similar to the one that we just considered, which was an LR series circuit, right? So again, we have an LR series circuit. The input is your voltage U of T, right? Which is the same as before, right? Okay, but in this case, in the case that we did before, what we, the output that we were interested in was the current I of T, right? And in this case, the output that you're interested in is the voltage across the inductor, right? Okay, and as I said, right, um, for our systems that we're going to consider in this class, your system is going to be modeled by a single differential equation, right? Okay, so let's see how we um, get a single differential equation that's going to relate your V of L, right, which is the output voltage across the inductor, right? You could use your Kirchhoff's voltage law, right, um, that the voltage, the input voltage U of T is equal to the voltage drop across your resistor plus the voltage drop across your inductor. Okay, now what we, well, you see what I want is something relating the U of T, right, um, to the VL, right? And that doesn't, I don't have that as yet, right? What I have is U of T, right? But I have an I over there, right? Okay, so essentially what we're going to do is we need to get rid of uh, the small I, the current over there, and replace it by something involving the V of L, right? And in order to do that, what we do is we use this equation here, which is just a definition of the inductive voltage, right? Okay, so V of L, we you know, is L D I D T, right? Right. Okay, so what you do now is, in order to remove the I over here, right? The method that you're going to use is, well, you differentiate this differential equation once, and then you differentiate this equation also once, right? So when you differentiate this here once throughout, right, you're going to get a second derivative here, right, second derivative d2i dt squared, which is this. Differentiate the i, you're going to get di dt, and you differentiate the u with respect to t, you're going to get u prime t, right. And similarly, when you differentiate this here, you're differentiating the di dt to get d2i dt squared, right, and you differentiate the vl to get vl prime, right. And now that I have this here, what I can do is, you know, just I have d2i dt squared over here. So I can replace the L di dt squared here with the VL prime t, right? Okay, so your VL prime t is going to go over here. So that is this, right? Um, and again, we want to get rid of the i over here, right? Now the di dt is from equation 22 here is VL on uh, L, right? Okay, so yeah, di dt you could replace by VL on L, and then you get this equation, right, um, relating your input over here, U of T, right, which is your input here, to your output, which is VL, right? The output that you're interested in is VL, right? So you wanna notice that you have a single differential equation Right, um, that is modeling your system. Right, what is slightly different um, in this case, right, is that uh, you have instead of your input, well, u of t, what you have is u prime t, which is different from what we had from before, right? But that's not really a huge deal, it's just saying that. Um, your VL depends more directly on the derivative of your input voltage than on the input voltage itself, right? Okay. Okay, so we saw that systems could be modeled by a differential equation, right? So your system here, right, where you have input voltage U of T and output current I of T, that system is modeled by this differential equation, right? Okay, and a second case where your input voltage was U of T, 
and then what you're interested in was output voltage VL of T, right? That was also modeled by a differential equation, right? Okay, so now let's consider the general definition, right? Um, we have a system that's modeled by a differential equation, right? Um, and this is the general form of how we're going to express a differential equation that models a system, right? Okay, so your x of t here is the input into the system and the y of t is the output, right, from your system over here, right? Um, this, it may look a little complicated, but it's really, you just have, say, like uh, your y of t and then you have derivative and then you'd have second derivative and then you have up to the nth derivative, right? And uh, the x of t, which is your input, right? You could have x of t, you could have the derivative of the input, x prime of t, right? And then up to the nth der derivative over here, right? And for our setup, uh, your m derivative is, the m over here is going to be less than or equal to n, right? So the power of the derivative here is less than or equal to your power of your derivative here, right? Okay, so power of derivative of the input is going to be less than or equal to the power of derivative of the output, right? Okay, so this here, again, while it looks a little complicated, right? Um, this is an example of something that is in this form, but probably this, this here, this example question, it might be a little clearer to see from this example question, right? Okay, so in this case, so what you have is you have a system, right? And as I said, a system for us is going to be modeled by a single differential equation, right? And in this case, the notation is slightly different from this definition, right? Um, the input is u of t, right? Not um, the big X, right? But it's, it's the same, it's the exact same idea. You're just calling it small u over here and you're calling it small x over here. Okay, so your input is u of t, and then the output is small y of t here, right? Like how the output is small y of t, right? Okay, and you want to notice on this side you have derivatives, like how you have derivatives here. And on this side for your input, right, you also have derivatives here, right? Like how over here on your input you have derivatives, right? Okay. Right, and what we want to get is we want to get the transfer function of your system, right? And how we're going to get the transfer function of your system is by taking Laplace transform, right? So it's similar to what we did when we were solving differential equations where you take Laplace transform on both sides. We're doing the same thing here, right? So what you're going to do is you're going to take Laplace to get your transfer function. You're going to take Laplace transform on both sides, right? And as a specific example, right, um, for your system modeled by this differential equation, what we're going to do is you're going to take Laplace transform on both sides, right? So if you want to get the transfer function, so you're going to take Laplace transform on both sides here, yeah, right? Um, all right, so I wrote out the work in, in more detail. It's the same differential equation over here that one I have as I have over here, All right? Okay, so I'm taking Laplace transform on both sides, right? I wanna get the transfer function of a um, system modeled by this differential equation. So take Laplace transform on both sides. You're doing what you normally do when you're um, solving a differential equation, right? It's similar, right? Very similar. So you take a Laplace transform, you use a linearity to break this up, right? Okay. And then now you use your formula for Laplace of derivatives, right? So Laplace of um, second derivative is S squared, Laplace of uh, the function itself, Y, right? So Laplace of Y is Y of S, right? Okay, and then with your initial condition, so this is your formula for Laplace of second derivative. And then you use the formula for Laplace of uh, first derivative. Okay, and this is just Laplace of uh, y, right? Y of s. 
And then similarly over here, you use your formula for Laplace of first derivative. Okay. Now, when you're trying to get your transfer function, right, the definition for your transfer function is you're going to be using Laplace transforms with all initial conditions being equal to zero, right? So when you're doing these problems, what you're going to do is you're going to put your initial conditions all to zero, right? So all of these are going to go to zero and things just simplify nicely, right? Okay, so this will drop off, this will drop off, this one will drop off. The u0 will drop off. So I'm left with s squared y of s plus 2s y of s and so on, right? Okay, and on this side I have an expression with the u of s, right? Okay, so what I eventually want to get is I want to get um, output which is big y, output which is y over uh, input which is u, right? Um, and your definition of your transfer function is uh, it's the ratio of y of s to, so this y is coming from your output and this u over here is coming from your input right okay so what I want is this ratio um, big y of s on u of s and in order to do that first thing you do here is you factor out um, the big y of s here and you factor out the big U of S over here. I know all you're doing is you're just rearranging, right? Um, this over here is going to come across on this side, right? Um, so it'll be in the denominator over here. The U of S will come across on this side. So the U of S will be in the denominator. So you get big Y of S on U of S over here is equal to 3S plus 12 on S squared plus 2S plus 5, right? And this expression over here, right, which is output over input, that's your transfer function, right, provided you took Laplace transform of everything. So this here is an example of finding a transfer function, right. So more generally, what you have is you have a differential equation representing your system. You take Laplace transform on both sides, right, um, what you're going to have is you're going to have a y of s you're going to have y of s terms on this side after you take Laplace transform. You're going to have big x of s terms on this side when you take Laplace transform and then you're going to have an equation essentially and then what you're going to do is once you take a Laplace transform you put your initial conditions to zero like what we did over here put your initial conditions to zero. And then finally what you want to do is you want to get the ratio big y of s over x of s and you're doing it in this way over here right um, the big y of s and well i'm using big u over here instead of big x right but it's the same idea right so that would be how you would get your transfer function right and if you wrote it out um, and you take laplace transform over here and you put in initial conditions all equal to zero right what you're going to get and you after you factor out the the big y of s you're going to get something looking like this right you want to notice that this line over here and okay so this here this line on your left hand side is an example of uh, this left hand side here right and this line over here on your right hand side is an example of this over here where i'm using big x over here instead of uh, big u and then once you have this here, what you want is big Y on big X, right? Okay, so what you'll do is you carry the big X across on the side, so it comes across the denominator. And this polynomial here with the A, O, S to the power N and so on, that's going to come across in the denominator over here. And that gives you your transfer function. Right, okay, so you have your system modeled by a differential equation and now we know how to get the transfer function of it by taking a plus transform on both sides putting initial conditions equal to zero and then rearranging so that you get big y on big y of s on big x of s right okay so once you get the big y of s on big x of s right what you're going to have is you're going to have a rational function in s right in other words you're going to have a polynomial on top a polynomial in S on top and a polynomial on S below, right? And we saw an example of this. A transfer function is a polynomial of S on top 
and a polynomial of uh, s below, right? Okay, so once we have that, right, um, what we want to do now is we want to factorize, right? Um, we want to get the poles and zeros of uh, your transfer function, right? Or your poles and zero of your system, right? Okay, so the poles and zeros, so we got the transfer function over here, right? What you do is, um, before you get your poles and your zeros, right, you want to check to see if you have any common factors, right? And if you do have any common factors, you're going to cancel them out, right? Right. Okay. Or if you want, um, first thing you're going to do is you're going to factorize in linear factors, factorize in linear factors. And if you do have common factors, you're going to divide them out, right? Anyway, so you want to make sure you have no common factors in the, between your top polynomial over here and your bottom polynomial over here, right? Okay. And once that is done, right, um, what you're going to do is you're factorizing, right? And now when we factorize and we factorize in, into linear factors, where it is possible that um, your linear factor could be to a power, right? So you could have, say, s minus 1 by itself or s minus 1, uh, say, squared or so, right? Okay, so you're factorizing into linear factors, this is slightly different um, from what we talked about um, before when we were doing Laplace transforms, right? Okay, so remember, if I had this sort of expression and I wanted to take Laplace inverse, right? Um, what I would do is I would try to factorize this denominator, right? And in this case, it cannot factor over the reals, right? And I would say complete the square and so on, right? In order to um, get the inverse Laplace transform, right? In this case, however, um, what you want to do is you want to factorize as much as possible, right? Um, so you do, if you have an irreducible um, uh, quadratic like this, right? Irreducible over the reals, right? Um, you want to keep going and factorize it um, using your complex numbers, right? Okay. Right, so Okay, so we have our transfer function here, and then what you're going to do is you're going to factorize for your transfer function. You're going to factorize the top, and we're going to factorize the bottom. And you want to bear in mind that, uh, okay, so once you factorize the top, right, um, these numbers over here, right, so for example, the W1, right, that is referred to as a zero of uh, a system, right? Okay, and if this over here is the power bigger than um, 1, right, then you're going to have a 0 of uh, order 2, right? Okay, if it is the power 1, then you have a 0 of uh, order 1, right, or multiplicity 1, right? Okay, similarly, looking at the, um, the factors down here in your numerator, right, um, for example, this Z2, right, this Z2, right, uh, is a pole of um, your system, right? Um, so the W2 here is a zero, and then for the bottom, the Z2 is a pole, right? Okay, so for Z2, if this N2 over here was to the power one, right, then you'd call it a simple pole, right? Because your multiplicity is one. And if, uh, your phase at two, you had, this was two over here, then what you'd have is you'd have a pole of order two, right? Or, or multiplicity two, right? When you do this factorization over here, right? Um, what you'd want to do is you'd want to factorize Okay, so for example, this is a transfer function over here that we just found, right? You want to notice that how I have it factored is that on the bottom here, the coefficient of uh, the s squared is equal to 1. And what I want to do on the top over here is I pull out the tree, right? Okay, so your top here, that s plus 4 is a polynomial of, right? It's a polynomial where your coefficient of the s is 1. 
and down here on the bottom the coefficient of the s squared is one right okay so once you do that um if you had this constant for example over here you'd need to pull it out the tree so the tree s plus 12 you pull it out to get tree s plus 4 right and once you have it in this form right this constant here that tree is called the gain of your system it's an example of a gain of a system right so that is what this notation is over here this when you expand this out the power of the s the highest power of the s would be a power one right if you forget about the k likewise over here the highest power of the s would be the coefficient in front here would be one right um and once you have it written in this form your constant outside in front there is called the gain of your system right so in this case for this transfer function where I factor the tree out then I have s plus four right and over here the coefficient of the highest power of s is just one right then the gain here is k equal to three right all right so we saw for this differential equation your transfer function h of s is three s plus twelve on s squared plus two s plus five Right. And what we want to get is you want to get the poles and uh, zeros of this transfer function, right? Right, so to get the zeros, what you're going to do is you, you set the top equal to zero, right? Um, if we factor it in this form where we pull out the gain, right? Then to get the, um, the zeros, you just set in the s plus 4 equal to zero, in which case the zero for your system would be s is equal to minus 4, right? Or next way to do this, right, is you write the s plus 4 as s minus something, right? So s plus 4 is s minus minus 4. And this would be your 0 over here, right? So the 0, you only have one 0 in this case. And the 0 is s is equal to minus 4. And similarly, to get the poles, what you do is you set your denominator here equal to 0, right? When you set the denominator here equal to zero, you're going to get um, two complex roots, right? Uh, and they occur in conjugate pairs, right? If you remember um, your, your algebra, right? So your complex roots would be minus one minus two j and then minus one plus two j, right? Okay, so these over here are what you get S, the minus 1 minus 2g and the minus 1 plus 2g are what you get by setting this denominator here equal to 0. And those are poles of our system, right? Alternatively, right, um, what you could do is if you wanted to get uh, the poles and you wanted to, well, it's the same sort of thing you factorize in order to get the complex roots, right? You notice here, I can write this as if I have s plus 1 squared plus 2 squared here, I can write this as s plus 1 plus 2j and s plus 1 minus 2j, right? Um, and uh, I rearrange this as s minus something and s minus something here, right? Um, so here I'd get s minus minus 1 minus 2j, which is your first pole, and s minus minus 1 plus 2j, which is your second pole. Right. Once you have it written like this, you want to notice that um, these poles over here, you have. it's not to say that each, any one of these is here to the power 2 or power 3 or anything. This is S minus uh, complex number to the power of 1 here. So you want to compare to your form of uh, your general form here for your transfer function. Right. So this Okay, so for example, this one is S minus a complex number, and we could call that complex number Z1. And this is S minus a complex number, which is a different complex number. You could say S minus Z2, right? Okay, and in this case here, right, uh, the power is 1, and in this case here, the power is 1. So your power is 1 here, your power is 1 here, right? So these are uh, poles of order one right uh, which are known as poles of order one or simple poles right right and once you have um 
your zeros and poles for a transfer function, right? Um, you could plot that in the complex plane, right? Um, so remember, your S here is complex, right? With real and imaginary parts, right? Okay, so this is your complex plane over here, right? Um, for S, right? Um, and you want to plot um, your zeros and your poles on your um, complex plane, right? So the poles you indicate by crosses and the zeros you indicate by circles, right? Okay, so we have, for example, this pole over here, which is minus one plus two J. So your real part for this pole is minus one. Your complex part is two J, right? So minus one, two, that is your location in a complex plane. So this is one pole. And next pole is minus one minus two J. And so your second pole is located here. And then finally is zero has no imaginary part, it just simply has a real part at minus four, so you plot it over here, right? Right, um, if it were that um, your pole or your zeros had a multiplicity that is greater than one, then how you indicate that on your, um, your diagram, so for example, if this pole over here was of order two, then you'd put, say, like a small two next to it, right, to indicate that it was of uh, order two, right? But that's not what we have in this case. In this case, everything is of order one, right? So there's no need for any numbers next to it to indicate multiplicities, right? If you have no number next to the pole or the zero, it's understood that the multiplicities are one. 